Jennifer here over at Crafting Chaos and I'm here with the video that I said I would show you how to make the stencil into um, of the rose into the butterfly if you will um, and it's quite easy so we'll get straight on. The first thing you need to do is find some free images so I looked up for free stencil rose and I selected this one and then I looked on free butterfly clip art and I selected this one. Download them to my computer by right clicking, oops, no. By right doing the save image as and then downloading it to my computer. So once you've got those two images, you're ready to start to create the file. Now I will try to include the images that I use saved to my um, blog which is Beverly 10 Blogspot, Crafty Chaos, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is open up a new Canvas workspace, and I'm going to just zoom in a little so we can get a slightly bigger canvas so we can see what we're working with. And the first thing I'm going to do is bring on a square, and I'm going to make it, because I like to make eight by eight cards, so I'm gonna make this square seven point five inches but obviously you could adjust that and do whichever size you wish and I'm going to use that as my reference for later so I've got that ready. Next we're going to come to the tracing icon and we're going to go to the butterfly and we're going to trace that first of all so I'm going to open it and as you can see at the moment where the turquoise line is going round it's only actually tracing the outer part of the image and in order to get it to trace the rest, what we need to do is click on this one here and trace areas by colour. Now you'll see it trace, trace the whole butterfly. We then want to deselect this option so that we don't get a picture on top of our cut file on the actual desktop. I'm also going to lo lower the number of colours because we've only got two colours on our screen that were on the paper and that was black and white. And usually, if you can minimise the number of colours that you're actually tracing, the number of nodes simplify and it becomes a less complicated file. So once you've done that, say OK, and it will bring on the butterfly, which I'm going to leave there for a moment. Then I'm going to go back to image tracing, go to my rose stencil, and similar things apply. We're tracing the areas by colour, taking it down as low as possible and taking off this select image paste on option at the top and say okay hang on just before we do that I've just remembered if I don't move that one it's going to paste it smack on top of that butterfly so I'm just going to select the whole thing and don't worry that it's made up of a few different parts at this stage but make sure you've selected the whole thing and just going to repeat that tracing function again so Hitting the raw stencil, deselecting this paste the image to the drawing area, choosing trace by colour and then knocking down the number of colours down as low as possible and in this case it's two. So say OK and that will paste it in the top left hand corner. Now I'm going to select everything and I'm going to group, so layer and group. And then to see what we've got, I'm just going to give it some colour. So I'm just going to select an arbitrary colour so that we can see the rows. Now we've finished with the rows for the time being, so I'm just going to move it off to the side and we're going to work with the square and the butterfly. So I'm going to, first of all, temporarily select everything from the butterfly and I'm going to group everything together. This will enable me to centre the whole file in the center of the rectangle by selecting both the sorry the square and the butterfly that's now grouped together and aligning centrally and vertically now that's put it in the middle and I feel that at the moment that butterfly is just a little bit on the small size so I'm going to increase the width to six inches and say okay by hitting there and see what it looks like and I think I'm going to go to 6.25 because I think that might just be the perfect size for this sheet. So I'm going to select both the butterfly and the square again and I'm going to centre it. 
Now I'm happy with the way that that's looking. It gives me room for a greeting if I wish, and also to add a few sequins and dots and things around just to, to pretty up the file. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to move the square off to the side. And the first thing I'm going to do now is click on my butterfly. And as you can see, if you look carefully, if I zoom in a little, you'll see that some of the lines are thicker in the middle. And that's because you've got a line on top of a line. So even if you don't do anything else, you definitely need to do this step. And that is ungroup. So I've grouped it temporarily to make sure that everything's there. And I'm just going to click on this outer edge so that it's selected and drag it away. Okay. And I'm just going to zoom back out again so we can see what we're doing. Zoom fit to match. So now we've got that butterfly which could be used as an embellishment of its own. So I'm going to select it, give it some colour so you can see what it looks like. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to select that butterfly I'm going to go on the second option down, which is edit, and then we're going right down to the bottom of that and selecting the offset function. And we're going to go 0 0.04 outward, round, because we want it to have rounded corners rather than angular. And we're going to say we want it just to do the around the perimeter for a matting layer. So we're going to say OK to that. And whilst it's selected, I'm going to hit duplicate by right clicking and duplicating or you can do it from the menu layer and duplicate or in my case I have a function button that I've made on my Mac that allows me to do that as a shortcut so I'm just going to move that one off to the side for a second and for this file here what we've actually made now is a matting layer for that butterfly as is but it will also be a matting layer for our butterfly that has the rows inlaid so I'm just going to send that to the back. So that file now for that butterfly would be classed as complete. So I'm going to select those and move it off to the side. I'm going to come back to this one now. I'm going to take a duplicate and move it across. And then I'm going to make another duplicate. And I'm going to move it out of the way. And this one that we've got left now is we're going to so we've got three of the same, one, two, three, that were identical. Now this one is 0.04 inches bigger than our actual file. So what I'm going to do is go back the other way, 0.04 inward, say OK. That gives us the in file. You can move that one away. And if you're unsure now which is the smaller of the two, you can check it using your width and height so that's 6.25 and that one's 6.33 so that's the bigger one of the two so I can delete that one and I'm going to leave that to the side and we're going to come back to that one in a minute. So what I'm going to do is leave that as a matting layer now for the butterfly that we're going to create with the, with the rolls inset and this one I'm going to make it into a card front for a seven, uh, sorry, for an 8 by 8 card that has a punched out aperture in which you could fit your butterfly if you what if you wish so I'm just going to select it and I'm going to fill it with color and as you can see now that butterfly shape has been punched out and we've got that where we could do stick that on the front of an 8 by 8 card inlay the the matting layer for this which is this one so I'm going to make this very dark. Sorry, no, it's this one, the bigger one. That's the 6.25 one, I think. Yeah, that's the small one. That's the big one. So this is the one that fits in there. So I'm going to make this a dark colour and put it in position um, right now. So I'm just going to give it a dark colour and I'm going to make it a very dark sort of a purpley colour, I think. So we want full saturation. And I'm going to move that into position. We'll just close that down. So that would then fit as an inlay on your card front, if you will. Obviously, you make it fit perfectly. So there you go. And then we can work on this piece here now. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to select all these individual pieces. And I'm going to group them. So layer and group. And then I'm going to select our butterfly, the outline 
go on the second option down and we're going to center and middle to get them lined up we're going to see what's on top and at the minute when i click on one of the small pieces it's selecting the outline telling me that that's the one that's on top so i'm going to arrange and send that one to the back which now means i can select the smaller pieces on top and i'm going to ungroup them now this is where we need to be very careful about not moving the butterfly and what we're going to be doing is bringing our rows which is a little bit large at the minute, so we're going to adjust the size in a, in a minute. I'm just going to move it down there, and I'm going to delete some of these pieces from the butterfly by clicking on them, and it's just these bottom ones in the bottom left hand of the left wing, if you will, the bottom left wing. And I'm going to leave the other bits at the moment. In fact, I think what I'm going to do is select those four across the... Sorry, excuse me, I selected the wrong thing. So I'm selecting these four across the middle by holding the shift key down as I'm selecting. And I'm just going to scoop them up ever so slightly by about four moves up using your keyboard. And then I want this part of the leaf that's sticking out on the rows the most to come into this part of the butterfly. So I'm going to rotate it a little bit till it's roughly in the right orientation and move it into position. Now we can see it's a little bit big so I'm going to go from one of the corners and drag it down to resize. Once I'm happy with the size I'm going to rotate it and make it fit where I want it to fit. So I'm going to select the rows, rotate and I'm going to use my keys now to move that design where I want it and if the angle's not quite right now at this stage I can always use the transform the angle here and do it one increment at a time so I can just rotate it slowly round and I need to go to the left a little and a little bit too far there and maybe down a little and to the left maybe just make it just a smidge smaller like so and if I click off now I'm happy with the position of my rows I might just skew it slightly because it's not really going to show and make it a little bit taller but not in both directions if you will and then I'm going to just rotate it again a little bit more move it up a little and I think that's going to be perfect. Now it fits nicely into the gap. Everything else is still loose. So I need now to select everything. Not that butterfly over here. We don't want that. So everything related to the butterfly that we're working on. So I'm just going to move that one out of the way. So all of these and its bits need to be selected together. Like so. And bearing in mind that that back layer is at the back. So select everything. Once you've got everything selected, all you need to do is hit subtract. Now, if we give that some colour, and I'm going to select a nice pale lilac colour so that it really stands out on that deep purple. I'm going to select both of these. Move them across so that you can see what the butterfly looks like when it's in position so as you can see you've now got that more or less in position it will have a slight border all the way around because remember we've used the offset to create the inlay and that is now the butterfly complete you could use some wire to make some antennae or you could draw them on with a fine liner and you could also use it just as a file on its own so that it's got a backing layer if you will and uplift the not just stick it down at the where the body of the butterfly is so it makes it three-dimensional 
just to make it that way so you've got the option of putting it in a card front and remember incidentally the ordinary one without the rose is also still a usable file that will fit in that aperture because it's exactly the same size so you can still work it that way so for the file now you've got several options of how you're going to go about making your final project and obviously, if your preference is a 6x6 six six card, then you can resize, select everything and resize it using your width and height. But you'd have to make sure that everything was in the middle. So if we just select everything by either going to File, Edit, Select All, or just dragging a box around everything and align everything to the centre, so now everything's there, but it's in the center. You could select it all again. And then whilst it's all selected now, if you wanted it to be six inches, you can change it to six and so on. And that will resize everything proportionally. So I'm going to undo that because I like my files to be up my eight by eight square card. So I'm going to leave mine at that. So you've got your two lacy butterflies, one that now has a rose. You've got your matting layer that will fit inside your aperture and you've also got the butterfly as it was before we put the rose into it to make it a little bit slightly different. So then what you would need to do, if you want to cut that on your, on your um, scan and cut, you go on export FCM file and save it to your machine, sorry, save it to your computer as an FCM file if you're not cutting it straight away or you can transfer it straight away as an FCM file. If you just hit save, it's going to save it as a, a brother file. So I'm just going to call it butterfly and it, call, it will save it as a canvas workspace file which can't be opened on the scan and cut machine. In order to get it to work on a scan and cut machine, you need to say export it as an FCM or transfer it as an FCM across the internet to your cutting machine if you are Wi-Fi enabled. So it's quite a simple process really. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Obviously if you see a, a butterfly that you prefer or you see a rose that you prefer, you can play around with this. You may decide to put roses in both parts of the butterfly and have all of this side of rose or you might decide to take out some pieces here and have two roses at the bottom so it's more um, symmetrical if that's what you like but you've got loads and loads of different options that's just the process by which you do it so I hope you've followed it along and you've understood the tutorial this can be used to do and manipulate lots and lots of shapes that change that to change them to suit your project whatever it is you're doing i hope you've enjoyed the video if you have please remember to like share and subscribe um, to my youtube channel and remember to check out my Be beverly's crafting chaos blog and i will leave a link before below in the comments and please remember to comment how you've if you've enjoyed the video what it was you've enjoyed what you'd like to see next etc and well we'll try to get onto that as we go through some of the backlog of, of files that people wanted me to have a go at. So I hope that you've enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thanks.